Next item, Mr. Mayor, is a resolution to condemn the structure at 475 East Robbins, number 183, and re this resolution is R1952. Do we have anyone who'd like to speak for or against this? Please step to the mic. If you would, please state your name and address for the record, please. Yes. My name is Sheila Miller. I live at 475 East Robin Street, Conway, Arkansas. One minute, I have to clean my glasses. Okay, I have found that if I write this out for y'all, it's going to go easier. And some people saying, with well, my temper, I can't do it, so therefore I'm going to show them I can. <laughs> so let's just get started. I've come here tonight to stand up for myself. My name is Sheila Miller. When I let city code in my house, I was looking for help, not to end up homeless. The first time I, I went to city code, they asked me if you, you go through with this, what's going to happen to the people out there? So I left. But this time, I'm not leaving. I'm standing up for myself, not only up to my landlord, the Embodens, but Conway City Code Enforcement. Look, I never planned to do anything like this, so bear with You're me, good. people. You're God right. creates Just things fine. in small Just steps. I, I understand the glasses, <laughs> I promise you. Thinking City Code Enforcement would help me, I let them in my house. I was wrong. They are only about to leave me and my family, my granddaughter, homeless homeless. I thought they would make the landlord fix my trailer to code. Their answer is to condemn the only home I have. Yes, my home should be condemned. The whole trailer park should be condemned. But everyone thinks I should keep my mouth shut. How is that fair? I should go away homeless. My story not told and no one to know how we are living out here. What's there in this statement, but any, it's there here. <laughs> but anyway, I've come here tonight to stand up for myself. My name is Sheila Miller. When I let city code in my house, I was looking for help, not to, in, oh, that's the same page, excuse me. <laughs> Woo, doggy. <laughs> okay. He's showing me where I'm going. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. How is this fair? This is all. This all started when I tried to get my landlord, the Embodens, to fix my trailer, or at least give me the supplies. They fixed nothing and have given me no supplies. Your city code man, Mr. Spencer, the first day said he was going to get me help. If helping is to make me homeless. I don't need his help. <laughs> All I know is the law, are, the laws are not good for renters in Arkansas. And if you have a bad landlord, you're going to find out just how bad they are. Whew. I'm a person fair and good to everyone. All I wanted is a fair. All I want is a fair landlord and a fair city code enforcement. We pay her our deposit. We, we and me for sure, pay her her rent. I pay my taxes to Conway on my van every year. That pays whatever y'all want. So asking my city code enforcement to help us make the emboldens bring our homes up to code is, is fair. Not content condemning them and leaving us homeless. You're not helping us. By doing this, you, you are making our lives more harder than they are already. So you want to know what I want from my city council tonight. I want you to help me and, and every family renting from the Embodens. Help your poor in your city like you would any member of your city. We understand we are poor. 
but must we be done like people of a third world country? America prides itself on telling the, the rest of the world we do our poor, we do our people better than third world countries, even our poor. Show us who live at Oakwood Trailer Park. This is true. Do y'all have any questions for me? If not, I have a list to start with. I have a list of what's going on out there. Y'all have any questions for I pass? One, one quick question. <laughs> okay. Do you own this trailer or does it I do both? not own it. She tried to sell it to me for practically two thousand okay. in a meeting we were in, and you know what I told her she can do, just use your imagination. <laughs> Thank you. Woo doggy. <laughs> Okay, so I start with my list. Yes, ma'am. Sure, sure. Things wrong. I live. I I've lived in this trailer park about ten years. This time, I've grown up off, out there all my life. This is my second trailer. My first burnt down. Number one fifty four. This one has ha had fires due to her work workers not doing the work right. Number one eighty three. She has the whole bathroom running out on the floor, and I ain't lying. Just about every pipe in our trailer runs out on, on the ground. She opens her sewer pipes and lets them run out on the ground. I have my granddaughter here as a witness where the water nearly killed her. The water is making people sick. People are dying of cancer out, out there or, or got it. There's black mold in every. There's black mold in just about every trailer, mine right now. Just about every trailer has holes in the floor, mine right now. Just about every trailer roof is falling in or leaking, mine right now. Sewer leaking from trailers and pipes, mine being one right now. I'm in. Her maintenance men do not know how to do the work she has them doing, and they do not have the license. That's all I have to say. When you say she and her, who are you referring the to? The Emboldens. Okay. That I believe I mentioned their name more than <coughs> once in here. Right. It's the Emboldens. Sure. It's Oakwood Trailer Park. Thank you, Ms. Miller. If you would, have a seat right there to hear from code enforcement. Do you have any questions for my granddaughter? She's here to speak about how her mouth erupted in blood in the bad water out there. Sit here and see if they have that. He wants y'all to hear what she wants. Uh, uh, Philip Fletcher, 2652 Bruce Street, Conway, Arkansas. So I'm just here uh, supporting uh, Miss Sheila. I've known her for 12 years. Our original community center in Oakwood was next to her uh, first trailer that burned down, and then we helped her move into the most recent trailer, which was five years ago. Uh, out there in Oakwood, um, Primarily, if we're trying to fix a trailer, it's a trailer that somebody has owned. Uh, our relationship with the M. Bowdens, we don't do much work on trailers they own. Uh, we have a back and forth relationship. Uh, we try to help everybody there as much as possible. Uh, as far as the quality of the trailers <coughs> in the trailer park, uh, a large majority of them are not in the best condition. Uh, and this has been a reality I've spoken about uh, before. Uh, there are other trailers out there that are well kept, uh, but they're owned uh, by another family that lives out there, the Mitchell family. Uh, and so the quality of the trailers you can tell in the trailer part are radically different. Uh, as far as, um, you know, for Miss Sheila specifically, uh, you know, I've seen the trailer and looked at it. It's not habitable, so I agree with. Uh, Spencer's conclusions, and I talked to Missy as well on the phone today. Uh, it's not habitable for anybody. Uh, and I've talked to Miss Sheila that, you know, even moving forward with this and her coming tonight, um, still the you have to have a solution of where you're going to go to, all right? And because she's limited on her rent and the amount that she's able to afford and pay, her options are uh, severely limited. So um, I know that's not up to this body, but, you know, either the M. Bowdens offer her another trailer uh, or she finds somewhere else to live. But again, uh, the ability to actually afford somewhere else to live based off of what she's paying now uh, is significantly limited here in the city. Uh, so I would hope um, this body would take this into consideration 
um, and even to a larger extent, uh, even what, what happened in Brookside, uh, the effects of what code enforcement is doing has effects. It has effects. I understand what she was trying to do. She was simply trying to get her home fixed as best as she understood what code enforcement was supposed to do. So that's reasonable uh, for her to think that, you know, the city sends somebody else out to force the landlord to fix something and there's other consequences of that. So you're doing your job, the city's doing their job, but it does create a situation as to where does someone like her and her income go in the city. And I think that's something as far as renter and landlord rights, at some point, this city needs to address uh, because th she is another example. Uh, even the previous case, I think, is another example that there are people in our city that look at code enforcement completely different and have a completely different understanding of, of what code enforcement does and just their way of life. Uh, and so let's you know, support Ms. Sheila and what she's up here to do. Um, but understanding as well, uh, this is not going to be the last time. All right, so thank you. Thank My you. granddaughter wants her chance to speak about what the water men did to her out there. Stand All right, up, Chanel. Sure. Step up, young, young lady. You have every right to, she wants to tell you herself. Tell them, Mrs. Smith. She wants her auntie up here with her. Sure. If you would, this state. Is my daughter. Oh, you want her to state State her name, please, for Turn the record. granddaughter and state her. My name is Chanel. Their whole name, honey. Chanel Miller. Tell them what happened with your mouth. I was drinking the water, and I had uh, some, uh, uh, what's it called, some uh, blisters. blisters in my mouth, and I had a big uh, bubble on my finger. And tell them what happened when, when, when Mimi roast you for the bad boys that night. They said... With your mouth, what happened before we... It started that? bleeding. Her mouth was ruptured. And they said that all the germs from that and the water that spread it to the tips of her fingers. <coughs> Ask her questions if you'd like. And we're still, her throat, her throat, is she still taking um, cough drops? Is she still having to brush her tongue? And they almost diagnosed us with cancer like they have several others out there. And I, I tell you, I about lost it. Savon Gardens should tell you I parked in their driveway and refused to leave. So it made them come out and push my van, and it didn't need pushing. Okay, I told him it wouldn't start to get the medicines I needed that night to get her home. So my granddaughter is walking, living proof of what we're going through out there. And if she would have, Crow will be home next month. Crow goes out and helps me hustle supplies. We put, I put my own work and labor into that trailer. Anything from the trimming, matching, to the painting, I've done it since day one. <coughs> me and her had the standoff when I asked you step up to the mic. I'm sorry. I should have asked you to, uh, to the microphone. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm having trouble hearing you. So. This all start well, and you'll see in my texts if you want to. We're, Shirley, pull it up when me and her are talking about Chanel being sick. This all started, and I told her that day in that text, my daughter's going to pull up to you. I've never seen such a cold hard thing, and I'm going to try not to go plum country on you because the words about came out of my mouth. There's some rednecks would be like, whoo, look at our girl go. So I'm going to tell you something. When she pulls this text up, that is the most cold-heartedest woman I ever seen in my life. But yes, we were in negotiations. And yes, she had decided it was time to tell me she wasn't giving me the linoleum or the things I needed. But I told her my granddaughter's fighting for her life. They're saying your water is a contributing factor to her fighting for her life. And my granddaughter's not the only one. Shirley, this older woman... She's taken four different or has took four different antibiotics, and she's went ahead and took another trailer. But I went over there and told her, you're on the same water pipes. Don't you drink that water. And she said, I can get this all gathered up. But let me tell you something. Until you live through what I live through with this woman, you don't know what a bad landlord is. And I've been to Sacramento, California, all the way to Seattle, Washington, and St. Louis, Missouri. And I've been on my own since I was 13 years old. And I ain't never... And I've been written since I was about 15, because California don't care as long as you pay. Ever had a landlord as low life as that out there? Did you find where she did that, Shirley? It's, 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 it's in Bowden. And I'm telling you, when you see these Texas, if it don't move you to tears, you ain't got a heart. 
And my baby, she may have touched on it and she may be here, but she ain't even begin to give you understanding. That was a nightmare. She can't even drink the water. I get my water from my uh, from Dell, my tire shop man across from Arby's. We bathe her in it. We got to wash our, our bodies, but she don't drink it. Conway Corp water? How is it? Her pipes are leaking out. You, you heard where I told you about her opening the sewer and drain, draining it out on the ground and how all her sewer pipes under the trailers are running out on the ground. She has contaminated the water. Did you find it, sir? That's a pressurized system. She has contaminated the water out there. And... Uh, I'm tell you what, I'm just gonna let him get up and speak while I look for that for y'all. But but let me tell you something. There ain't nothing like 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 Cheryl and Bob and Bo and ain't nothing like them. And they could have gave me the linoleum. They got a carpet place. I go in there to keep them have to look at them to pay the rent. I was gonna do the labor. Thank you, Miss Miller. And I'm gonna look that up for y'all. You would state your name and Yes, sir. I'm Spencer Clausen, City Code Enforcement. I'm uh I've been dealing with uh, the Embodens at 475 East Robbins in their Oakwood Village Trailer Park, and that's where Ms. Miller and I met. Um, I love what I do. One of the most difficult things about it is sometimes uh, you you interact with people like, like Ms. Miller that uh, is living in a terrible condition that um, the, the, she... She uh, spoke with me, and she wanted me to come look at her property, said it was it needed to be condemned, holes in the floors, rats, mold, unsanitary, sewer, water, all this stuff. And I was already there taking pictures of the outside of the property. Um, it had some, some violations of things that she'd accumulated. Uh, fence, made of, fence made of bed frames and pallets and, and other things uh, such as that. Would you let him speak, please? When when she invited me inside to take a look at things, I uh, I wasn't really sure what I was going to find, and, and uh, I, I was I was kind of taken aback. It, it wasn't it wasn't bad shape. This was uh, around April April of this year. Uh, we've given time to, for improvements to happen on the outside, on the inside, uh, things of that nature. And this morning, I wanted to go over there and just make sure that Ms. Miller knew that uh, it, this was on the agenda tonight. Talk about condemnation, and I wanted I didn't feel good coming up here trying to uh, talk about this condemnation and her not have a place to go. So that's one thing that was very important to me is I wanted to make sure that she had a place to land. If indeed the trailer was condemned, uh, that, that she would not be on the street. That's not my goal at all. That would be an unintended consequence of trying to to get this trailer uh, to, to be condemned and hauled off. This trailer, even if she moves out, nobody needs to live there. I've got, I've got pictures here. There is a video. Um, I don't know. I think it's been sent to you. I, I hope you've had a chance to watch it. If not, uh, I would love to show it. The, the, the video speaks more than the pictures. But we filmed that today. Uh, the bathtub is sinking into the floor. There's sewer water, wastewater, black mold, uh, black in color, and other molds on the ceiling. Uh, and in one of the bedrooms, there is, uh, there's been so much water leak, it's leaked and kind of ruined her stuff. It's stuff's covered in mold. She's got a piece of furniture propped up the ceiling in her bedroom. Uh, since I was there in April, there's been two fires. Is that correct uh, due to the wiring? The, the one where the fire department came out, they came out. She had Rick come in and the, where I showed you that first fire in the bedroom where she just had to yes. fly block it off to keep the kids By the rat hole? Room. Yes. Yes. Um, she had Rick. It's a thing that has more prong. You know, I would want something plugged in, but there's no electricity in that bedroom without it. And yes, ma'am. And I had to have it called. Okay, thank you. And. You know, I, I, I agree with her and Dr. Fletcher on, on what they said, is that it, it does need to be condemned. It's not fit for human habitation. I, I don't know that uh, your granddaughter lives with you full time. Yes, I, she does. She does? Okay, okay. Uh, in, in, okay. Um, there's no, a child does not need to live in this place. I mean, even after leaving today, I had some respiratory problems due to the mold and being in there. There's uh, holes in the floor. There's a place where a tree had fallen through and basically just made it into a window. Uh, holes under mattresses are covering up holes in the floor in the living room. Um, it, it isn't a terrible, terrible shape. Um, you know, I, I don't, 
I don't like coming up here and taking someone's home from them. That's not that's not what I'm trying to do. She she let me know that she had an aunt Peggy in Melbourne. Can't go there because um, the doctor needs me to stay and and home. the doctor Fletcher would help her relocate, and that's that's what I hope can happen. Um, he needs some help just in by himself. He doesn't uh, have the money. Just move his hand. Thank you. Like I said, when I spoke with her this morning, we had filmed and, and things had gotten worse due to rain, neglect of maintenance, whatever the situation may be. The trailer has has gotten worse. There's there's a place where the wall has separated from the floor and duct tape covers it so that you can't see the, the ground on that side. The window unit air conditioner is so heavy and the wall is uh, in such rot that it's bowing the wall out and it's molding all around that just due to the, to the moisture condensation. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a terrible place for, for somebody to have to live. Um, I, I, there's no way to repair this trailer in any kind of livable fashion. It's, I mean, it, it, would, it would take a fleet of carpenters and they would just tear it down to the ground and rebuild something. There's, there's not enough material left there to even hammer on. I mean, it's, it's soft from rot and it's, it's in bad shape. So, uh, and like I said, over the times we visited, I wanted to understand the consequences of pursuing this condemnation. And, and that's, that's how she's wanted to go with it. And we've given enough time uh, to hope that, that maybe some situation would change with her, she could find a new place to live before that happened and, and, and condemn it without her in there. But after going there today, uh, I've, I've got pictures here. These were actually taken today. If these, are, these are still shots off of the video, and I'd like to pass these pass around. Yeah. Um, we'll start with pictures. And I have that thing about my daughter's cancer. Remember, she got sick with her mouth, and I never wanted it condemned. I wanted help getting it fixed. I knew my daughter got cancer. That is a place that packs the sand that leaks and is helping me. I don't need your help. Council, while y'all are looking at those, I'm gonna take I'm gonna step away for just a minute. I need to talk to city attorney. He just walked in. Mr. Fletcher, could I ask sir. you a question? Yes, sir. Is, is there no room anywhere for people like this to go temporarily that you're aware of? As far as for a family, sir? Yes. No, sir. As far as uh, with the uh, three shelters in time, myself, Bethlehem House, and the women's shelter, uh, there's no one else for to go. Uh, Harbor House, they... They, um, they focus on women in rehab. Renewal Ranch is men in rehab. So when a family uh, is in a situation like this or an individual, um, there's no place to go. I mean, you can put them up in a hotel, but that's not economically feasible. And like even, you know, churches have moved away from that. Uh, ministry Center rarely does that. I rarely help with a hotel because it's just not economically feasible uh, for family to stay that long of a time until you get them into a, uh, a new spot. Um, the majority of families who moved from uh, Brookside, uh, mo some of them landed in Glen Echo uh, because it was bought by a new uh, owner, um, but his, his rates are about uh, 500 you know, for lot and rent, uh, 250 at the bottom because some of them own their trailers. Uh, so the issue becomes um, either temporary housing or finding uh, a place to stay that is equitable uh, to what a family's been, you know, obviously they can afford in their budget. And so we try to try to make do as best as possible. If they don't have family um, kind of stuck because a lot of times it's multiple families that stand together. 
too. So uh, we try to do what we can and make do. Thank you, Dr. Fletcher. I visited with Chuck for uh, and uh, Evan for just a moment. This is this is my personal thoughts on this. We as a body accomplished absolutely nothing by putting this this lady on the street. We're, that's not what we're here we're doing. We we we're accomplishing nothing. That's not the right thing to do. What Chuck and Evan and I talked about is we take no uh, action on this tonight. And we table it and give the time, and in the meantime, have the property owner come to our next council meeting and explain their side of this and, and how we've got to this point. And what they can do to fix it. Yes. Yeah. We, we, don't, we don't want you out, ma'am. I mean, I'll, I'll be on the street. But I appreciate the code enforcement office because I really do believe in Spencer's heart. He's, he's, he's trying to help you and try to do the right thing. So what we're trying to do here is come to a happy, happy spot. What we're going to do tonight, Ms. Miller, if it's okay with the council, we're going to table this, which means you can go back home. Nothing's changed. And in, and in the meantime, we're going to make contact with the property owner and, uh, and ask them to uh, be two weeks from tonight. Yeah, it may be. It depends. It's the, it's the second, fourth, second, fourth Tuesday. Can somebody just take my information and contact me? Or October, me? October, okay. 8th. Yeah, October 8th. October 8th. October 8th. October 8th. October 8th. Dr. Fletcher, you'll take care of that? All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Would you like to read what they're reading on my phone? I can't take it. Right, I'll take a motion to table this time. So um, moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to table this this time. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes six to zero. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Miss. Miller, thank you. Spencer. Absolutely.